Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split City DIY, and it's October. So that means it's time to start thinking about ghosts and stuff and scary monsters and nice sprites. Besides your dubstep playlist, though, you might want to start thinking about decorating for Halloween, uh, which is why I've modeled up this fine, spooky specimen. This ghost is basically a riff on a project I did last year for Halloween. Uh, you may remember the jack-o'-lantern named Jack project. Now, where did I put... Oh! Here's Jack. Now, Jack has these LED eyes, as you can see right here. And they can either be solidly on or get some nice PWM action. And Ghost here, not to be confused with Jon Snow's pup named Ghost, uh, actually has the same circuit going on. We can either have solid blue or with just the flick of a switch, some PWM. The circuits are, as you could guess it, identical. We've got 10 millimeter LEDs uh, with a resistor on the anode specifically for 70 ohm. Uh, and then those are hooked up to a Gemma M0 uh, dev board. Why a Gemma? Well, it's first of all very small. Like, probably like a quarter size. Very nice. Uh, it has an on-off switch already on board, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, it has a nice socket for a LiPo battery, or it can be powered for the USB. And it has the M0 processor, so you can code in CircuitPython or Arduino, depending on your preference. And speaking of CircuitPython, this is in fact coded in CircuitPython. As you can imagine, it's a very simple script. Basically, we've just got a loop uh, and depending on the state of the switch inside, uh, you're going to have your LEDs on or PWM, as you just saw. The actual modeling for the ghost was pretty simple because I kept it kind of purposefully minimalistic. So I started off first with a tall rectangle and I used all um, like set dimensions so I could adjust this if I wanted to. And then from that rectangle, I just added fillets to make a cylinder. I could start off with a cylinder, but hey. Uh, then I added a fillet on top to get us the curvature of the head. Now the exciting part came for the fringe. Uh, I created this offset plane off in front of Ghost's uh, not created face yet. Uh, and I drew a triangle on that plane and then I extruded in. And then this made the little cutouts. And then on the faces here of the cutouts, uh, I created a pattern to go all the way around and then extruded that. And that's how we got the fringe. Using the same offset plane, I drew in the eyes and the mouth, extruded, and there you go. That's it. Oh, and I added a shell. This is hollow. It's still pretty thick, but it's hollow, so that's, that's nice. So uh, it's definitely one of those models that's not optimized for printing. We're focusing on the post-print aesthetic, but I mean it printed fine, but it does require some support, specifically for the eyes and the mouth. Uh, to do that, I actually used uh, the custom supports feature in Prusa Slicer. It's kind of a new thing. I will say, trying to get it so that I just had supports in the eye sockets and the mouth hole was like a challenge. I had to really like, basically you use these square shapes or whatever shape you want really um, to define where you want supports and trying to get it so that when I sliced it, and I didn't have supports on the build plate, like just going up to like nowhere was really hard, but I got there, I got there. And I actually printed it so that it was upside down. Uh, I did that because like this is a nice flat top here. I did end up using supports to support its little head while it was printing. Cause it's a long print, it uses a lot of filament and I'm always of the mindset that if you're gonna do a long print like that so that you don't end up wasting more filament, like a failure halfway through would be absolutely tragic on this thing. Um, I just added supports that I knew it would print because I did start printing at first without supports and by like layer three, I knew it was gonna be a bad time. Now I printed this in Matter Hacker's build series PLA in white, of course, and it was my first time printing with it. It was a fresh roll. I just got it. My original white spool from Monoprice had finally run its course. So it was time for a new roll. Uh, and I have to say, I'm not 100% thrilled with how it printed at default settings. I've used build series PLA before, just used default PLA settings in Prusa Slicer. It's been fine. 
this wasn't that fine. I didn't like the finish with the supports and I use the detachable support settings. I don't usually get this kind of finish on the top. I can see a lot of lines happening. So I might have to play with that. But I mean, for what it is, it's, I mean, it's a ghost. It, it's, it's a novelty ghost. It's, it's fine. Uh, but I did actually end up sanding the top because I was that upset with how it looked. I used 220 grit sandpaper and now it's at least smoothed out. Nothing's sticking up or looking too jagged. And like, unless you're like looking directly at the top and you're probably like looking for it, you, you won't really notice it as bad. It's definitely still like not, not great. Uh, but I mean, it is what it is. It's a novelty ghost. And for the rest of the finishing, uh, as you can see, I actually painted inside the eye holes here. I've talked about the paint that I used before. Uh, I get this cheap acrylic paint that Target sells. Prints, uh, it prints. It paints onto PLA quite nicely. I actually just printed this Rick Bust, uh, not in the Build Series PLA, uh, and painted it with using all the, the Target paint. I think it came out really nice. So that's what I used. I usually do like two to three coats for the eyes here. I did three coats. I thought it would make the uh, LEDs pop a little bit better, and I think that achieves it. Uh, then, as far as finishing up, it was electronics time. Uh, the Their electronics are just hot glued in here, uh, and everything's just kind of this freeform wiry thing, so yeah, just some blob of hot glue in the eyes, stick the LEDs in, then blob of hot glue for the Gemma, blob of hot glue for the switch, put it inside the ghost, and call it a day. And that's it. That's, that's the project. Super fun, simple, spooky Halloween project. I might keyword might uh, scale down this model since I did leave everything um, with the, the adjustable dimensions in Fusion 360 so that you could um, put five millimeter LEDs or three millimeter LEDs and it would get smaller as a result. That might be kind of cute. Also you could, oh I just thought of this because it's hollow. It could be like a matryoshka. Oh hey. But if I do that uh, I will add those files onto Thingiverse uh, with this original big boy model. I know a lot of people might not want to print such a large, thick ghost, uh, but I wanted it to match the scaling of Jack. Aren't they cute together? I mean, come on. And the thicker walls here make it so that it stands up really nice. And I have two cats that like to run around, knock everything down in my apartment at like two in the morning. So we need some stable decorations here, guys. But like I said, this will be on Thingiverse. And then on GitHub, I'll have the super simple code that you could probably figure out yourself, but hey, I'll put it up there anyway, along with the circuit diagram that, again, you could probably figure out yourself, but I'll put it up there anyway. But that's going to do it for this video. Maybe this is a new channel tradition. I'll design up a super minimalistic our Halloween archetype, print it, throw some LEDs in it. Maybe I won't. Who's to say, really? But if you liked this video, toss me a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. As I said, I'll throw everything down in the description so that you can have all the Halloween decorations you want. Jack is already on Thingiverse. You can print him as well. He has a removable top. It's really his best feature. Uh, thank you for watching. So subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. Happy Halloween.